So this is a <coughs> this is the Jacobi iteration. So when does it actually converge? So let's do some convergence analysis. The convergence analysis I want to first uh, before we start to do any convergence analysis for iterative methods, including this case for solving linear equations and solving nonlinear equations. I first want to emphasize this is a different type of convergence analysis from the kind of convergence analysis we see in looking at discretization of PDEs. So, so for for discretization, for example, if we use finite difference. We want to say, okay, my u of i plus 1 minus u of i minus 1 over 2 delta x actually converges to my partial u partial x as delta x goes to 0, right? That's the convergence analysis we did using Taylor series analysis. And uh, the primary tool is Taylor series. But this is different. The Jacobi iteration and all iterative methods, we are talking about convergence of iterations. It is saying that my u at the kth iteration, uh, just to distinguish it from the kth power, converges to my u, which is the exact solution or imagine if you actually do backslash on the matrix you get u while if you do Jacobi you get uk and this convergence is as k goes to infinity All right. so for the first type of convergence we talk about the rate of convergence first order second order right and uh, basically that's the remaining term the error term scales to delta x or delta x squared for the iterations, most of the time, you should expect exponential convergence. So the error usually goes to the, like, a to the kth power, where a is something smaller than 1. Okay. And uh, so let's give it uh, for uh, as for Jacobi iterations what are the tools you usually use to analyze the convergence so for Jacobi iteration we are saying let's go from the simpler form uh, which is the mathematical form d times u k plus 1 plus off diagonal times u k plus b is equal to 0 that's the iterations right and if I have the exact solution, then it means a u plus b is equal to zero, which means d times u plus o d times u plus b is equal to zero. So, taking a combination of these two equations, subtract. That gives me an equation for the error, which is defined as u k minus u. Right? So this minus this will give me d times ek. This times this, uh, this minus this would give me od. Oh, sorry. So, so this minus this would give me uh, ek plus 1. So the first term is d times ek plus 1. The second term is od times ek. The third term, b minus b, would give me 0. So this is equal to 0. Looking at the error equation, so, so doing, doing convergence analysis to iterations is actually a little bit like doing stability analysis to PDEs, where you, you take uh, an error and show that the error doesn't actually go to infinity. It's a little bit like that. So in this case, you take the error, and you want to show that the error actually goes to zero. Right. And of course, doesn't go to infinity. So, so here I can see that my e k plus one is actually equal to minus d inverse times o d times e k. So this minus d inverse times o d is what we call the Jacobi iteration matrix, because that's the matrix that determines how does the error in the Jacobi iteration 
go from one iteration to the next iteration. So, can you see over the, from this equation, what is the convergence criteria for Jacobi iteration? What actually have to happen to this Jacobi iteration matrix? Right, so you need all the eigenvalues of the Jacobi iteration matrix to lie within the unit circle. Because usually the, I mean only in special cases the eigenvalues are all real, in which case it has to be between minus one and one. And uh, uh, in general, you have to be within the unit circle in the complex domain. Okay. So, when is that the case? There is no general statement I, I can make. When is that, that is usually the case. But like there are some special cases where that is true. So for example, if A is what's called a diagonally dominant, then the, uh, the well, let me just introduce the term spectral radius. So lambda, is called the spectral radius. It's basically the radius of the eigenvalues. It's like, okay, so if you if you draw the complex domain, the real part of lambda, lambda is the eigenvalue, the imaginary part of lambda, and for all the, you, you plot this for all the lambdas. So you may have a lambda equal to zero, lambda equal to this, some of them are real, some of them are complex pairs and stuff. You, you basically you plot all of them. For big matrices, uh, usually it may look like a cloud. For some structured matrix, it, you ha may have some very interesting geometric shapes. But the spectral radius is if you draw a circle, if you draw the smallest circle that encompasses all these eigenvalues, what is the radius of that smallest circle? That's called the uh, spectral radius. Right, so, so saying that all the eigenvalues has to be contained within the unit circle basically says that the spectral radius of the matrix has to be less than 1. So uh, there is a theorem that says if A is diagonally dominant, then the spectral radius of A, uh, of, of, this, uh, of this Jacobi iteration matrix is going to be less than 1. So what is diagonally dominant? Diagonally dominant means if you take any row of the matrix, the diagonal element dominates everything else. Or uh, mathematically, what does it mean by dominant? That means A of ii has an absolute value greater than the sum of everything else. Right, so that's a that's a very strong condition, as you can see. Um, so, for example, the matrices we looked at. If you look at the first line, the first line seems to indicate the second order derivative is is diagonal dominant. But then, if you look at the second line, because there is this term here, the diagonal has exactly the right magnitude to balance the sum of everything else. So you can't really say it's strictly diagonally dominant. So Jacobi, I mean the, the theorem doesn't apply and say this is going to converge. Actually, if you, if you modify this to be two, and this, if, you, if you have Newman boundary conditions for both sides, you actually see that Jacobi actually doesn't converge. Uh, but like uh, if you have one here, Jacobi does converge. So this is a, this is a, uh, this is a sufficient but not necessary condition for the convergence of Jacobi iterations. And this is still useful. For example, if you, so, if you, use, a, if you use implicit time stepping to solve, a, uh, to solve a PDE, you are actually free to choose your time step. And choosing the time step actually chooses what diagonal term you add to the matrix. And you may actually size your time step to make sure that you are diagonally dominant. 
right? So then you can be sure that Jacobi is going to convert when you solve this system. So, so this is a, a this is a basically the first uh, iterative methods we introduced the Jacobi iteration and its convergence analysis. It's uh, the most primitive one. The, you can usually do better than just doing Jacobi iterations. But like uh, this is probably the most uh, straightforward and uh, uh, way to solve a system of equation using iterative methods. So next class we're going to be talking about more advanced uh, iterative methods.